So let's talk about hormone optimization. Today we're going to talk about hormone optimization in reference to estrogen and testosterone and their derivatives. Now, estrogen and testosterone and their derivatives are what we call sex steroids. Now, the sex steroids immediately call to mind sex, for obvious reasons, and steroids, meaning anabolic steroids. But I just want to emphasize that estrogen and testosterone are present in everybody. It's their ratios that determine their effects. So today we're going to talk about how you can optimize their ratios depending on your particular life goals. Because the ratio of estrogen and testosterone in every individual has profound influence on feelings of well-being, feelings of optimism, feelings of anxiety or lack of anxiety, on reproduction, on sexual behavior independent of reproduction. They are profoundly powerful molecules. And we all make these molecules to some degree or another, but they're also important behavioral tools, supplementation tools, as well as prescription drugs that can impact the ratios of testosterone and estrogen in really powerful ways. So we're going to cover all of that. I want to emphasize that when you hear sex steroids or steroid hormones, most people think about anabolic steroids. And of course, anabolic steroids are derivatives of testosterone or testosterone itself. And they are heavily used and abused in the sports community as well as outside the sports community. But there, of course, are many steroids that are not anabolic steroids that are also abused in sports. Today, we're not talking about drugs in sports, but I think that it carries such a heavy weight when people hear the word steroids, they think about anabolic steroids. So while today's discussion will certainly be relevant to physical performance, in fact, we're going to talk about how specific types of exercise, particular patterns of cold exposure, as well as particular patterns, believe it or not, of breathing can impact sex steroid hormones, both estrogen and testosterone. The discussion isn't really geared towards performance enhancement in sport, although we will do an entire episode, perhaps even an entire month related to performance enhancement in physical enterprises. So one of the first things to understand if you want to optimize your hormones is where they come from. There are a lot of different glands in the body that produce hormones. There's the pineal gland. Some hormones are made in the hypothalamus. Hormones are made by the gonads, the ovaries or the testes. You've got the thyroid gland. There are a bunch of different glands that make these different hormones. But when we're talking about the sex steroid hormones, estrogen and testosterone, the major sources are ovaries for estrogen and the testes for testosterone, although the adrenals can also make testosterone. Now, there are also some enzymes. Enzymes are things that can change chemical composition. And the enzymes that we're going to talk about today are the aromatases mainly. The aromatases convert testosterone into estrogen. So in a male, for instance, that has very high testosterone, some of that is going to be converted into estrogen by aromatase. And aromatase is made by body fat. It's also made in the testes themselves. A lot of people don't realize this, but the testes actually have the capacity to manufacture estrogen and aromatase, albeit at low levels. But this turns out to be important for optimizing hormone levels in males at later points. And we'll discuss that. It's important to note that there's a huge range in terms of the levels of hormones, testosterone and estrogen, between individuals. And it actually occurs within individuals across the lifespan. I'm not going to throw out specific numbers of X picograms per deciliter, et cetera, today, because that's going to vary a lot. It's going to depend on whether or not you're measuring in picograms or nanograms and, and that sort of thing. If you want to examine your hormones, you should do that in conjunction with a medical doctor. Ideally, an endocrinologist can help you sort out that information. But... The important thing to know is that prepubescent females make very little estrogen. And when we talk about estrogen, we mainly talk about estradiol, which is the most active form of estrogen in both males and females. So prepubescent females, very low levels of estrogen. During puberty, levels of estrogen, aka estradiol, basically skyrocket. And then across the lifespan, estrogen is going to vary depending on the stage of the menstrual cycle. But as one heads into menopause, which typically takes place nowadays, somewhere between age 45 and 60, levels of estrogen are going to drop. And then post-menopause levels of estrogen are very low. As well, testosterone will fluctuate across the lifespan. Testosterone is going to be relatively low pre-puberty in males. During puberty, it's going to skyrocket. And then 
the current numbers are that it drops off at about a rate of 1% per year. Although we're going to talk about some data that show that there's actually tremendous variation in testosterone levels. There's actually a lot of examples of men in their 90s, their 90s, who still have testosterone levels that mimic pubertal levels, which is remarkable and speaks to the huge variation in testosterone levels across individuals. So let's talk about other sources of these hormones, and then it will make clear what avenues you might want to take in order to optimize these hormones. The other glands and tissues in the body that make these hormones, testosterone and estrogen, as I mentioned briefly, are the adrenals. So the adrenals ride out top the kidneys and the release of these steroid hormones from the adrenals, in particular testosterone and some of its related uh, derivatives, are mainly activated by competition. 